As members of the first class of our new program, you will be seen as trailblazers and leaders, as innovators and risk takers, and as change makers. By opening or working in dispensaries or welcoming patients into your medical practice, those of you not directly involved in the industry seek a way to be involved, to advocate for improved regulations and policies, to change laws, and to better understand the science of this plant. The mo thing I'm most excited about is the diversity of this group. About 50% of you have backgrounds in science or medicine, and we also have students who have studied law, uh, public health, political science, communications, and many other fields. About a third of you currently work in the medical cannabis industry. We have students between the ages of 22 and 72. We have students from 32 states, plus Washington, D.C., Hong Kong, and Australia. So what I have before me are a couple of items that we sell in the dispensary currently. So for those who prefer to, use, to vape or inhale their flower, uh, we sell the PAX 3 here. This is good for loose leaf flower and for concentrates as well. On each of the products in Maryland, uh, you have to have a label that lists the contents, the cannabinoids and the terpenes in it, so you know exactly what you're getting. We opened about two years ago. We just celebrated our two-year anniversary. Curio is a vertical operation, so we, we operate from seed to sale. So we'll grow the flour, we process to make oil, concentrated oils and bombs and all those types of things. So there are lots of questions around is, you know, it's CBD only in hemp derived? Is it like how, do, what does cannabis really mean? You know, very, you know, high level questions. And then there are other people that are asking questions like, um, how are you studying the information that you're getting from your patients? How do you, you know, really work with patients to figure out what strain or what, what modality is, is going to be best for them? Particularly someone asked me, how do you start with dosing with patients? Is it the same? Uh, is it the same for every condition? And so I would tell them, no, it, it really isn't the same. And that's the difference between this, the way that can medical cannabis is used and how you know, traditional pharmaceuticals are used in dosing. We've been interested in this for a long time. We had some other uh, um, colleagues that um, have been successful in, in getting licenses, dispensary licenses in other states. And um, that's really inspired us to really uh, look into like the business side and, and perhaps uh, with our interest in uh, this, this field, like perhaps maybe getting a dispensary or, or doing something uh, along those lines. But for this program, the education piece um, is, is huge because that's what's really missing. I, interestingly enough, was in the military before and even a firefighter in Howard County. And then I was diagnosed with epilepsy. So, for me, uh, cannabis has kind of become a kind of a love child, but also it's my career at the same time. Being already in the industry just kind of gives me a basis for building a uh, basis of legitimacy and educating patients on a daily basis and building passion within the community about cannabis as a medicine. So I heard about the program from my colleague Jamie, who's here as well. Um, and so we work for Nutrifield, which is an agricultural goods manufacturing company based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, so we produce liquid fertilizers, substrates, pots um, for growing plants hydroponically. I'm very surprised at how different the laws are between the states. So we have state level uh, government in Australia as well, um, but it's not as different as it is here. Like it's quite surprising how just drastically different the, the laws are from state to state and how confusing that is for everybody and must be for patients trying to get the medicine. So I was very surprised by that. My interest in the course started with being a military chaplain, believe it or not. Um, I was an army chaplain and being in the industry, I saw how PTSD affected soldiers and sailors because I was also in the Navy. And I realized that cannabis can be an effective solution for that population. So I'm definitely here to learn more about it. I love the diversity in the room. I love the energy in the room. It's unlike anything that I've ever been a part of. And I'm just so looking forward to what I can do after this is done and just linking up with more teammates and just really learning and growing. 
I work in child food insecurity, actually. I have a holistic background. Um, I was working for a while as a healthy chef and a holistic health counselor, working with patients at the individual level around food and nutrition um, in the picture of wellness. And um, I feel like this program in particular really build off of my holistic knowledge. And I'm so excited about what is happening in the industry and the advancement of the therapeutic aspect of cannabis. Um, so that's what's exciting to me and that's why I'm, I'm here. So the second course 602, if you read it, Principles of Drug Action and Cannabinoid Pharmacology. Half of you, the ones with the science and the medical training are thinking, fine. The other half are out there going, oh my God. <laughs> yes? Well, we are designing this course so that everybody gets something out of it. We want everyone to be able to, um, from this course, the outcomes, to be able to understand the pharmacology and the, how the drugs work in the human body. One of the focus areas for the commission has been research and education. And we think that dovetails really nicely with this, this program. And I'll give you an example that we just passed a regulation that would require a clinical director to be on-site at dispensaries. One of the biggest issues is that patients don't know a lot about cannabis. They're going into dispensaries and oftentimes there's not a medical professional on site. Um, so the commission with this regulation is requiring that and that individual can be a physician, a pharmacist, other medical professionals, but also someone with substantial experience with cannabis. And we would envision that an individual with this degree could potentially fill that role moving forward.